the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you got lost as Kurt read the reading this morning? No? Did you, did you follow along pretty well? He, Paul, Paul is known to repeat himself. Remember last week I said that he said the same thing three times? He said the same thing over and over and over and over again this morning too. Because Paul wants to make sure that you understand what he's talking about. Right? Last week we did chapter 5 where it talked about how sin comes in and all of us are sinners and we've all fallen short. And then we start out with chapter 6. So, because grace abounds, right, we all know that God is graceful, and that He gives us enough grace that He covers all of our sins. Like I just said to the kids and to all of you, a little bit later, Wesley's going to come up here and we're going to clean him off, right? It's not going to sound good, but we're going to help him die, right? He's going to die to the sinful person, not like he's really a sinful person at this point. I mean, when you look at him, he's so cute. But... <laughs> We all have that sinful self on us, right? And in these waters up here, we're washed clean of all of that. But are we really? How many of you were were claimed and named in the waters of baptism? It's okay to raise your hand. God named you as His child, claimed you as His own, and washed you clean. So, since the day you were baptized, how many of you have committed sins? I remind you, you're in church. (laughs) Right? We still do that. Even though we were washed clean, even though we were covered with God, we still continue to fall into that. One of the the things I listened to this past week about this particular passage, bless you, and about how we can possibly understand this. It's hard for us to understand this, how we've been made new and have this new life in God and we should just completely throw ourselves into that and, and not even look back. It's hard for us to understand that unless you've been an addict. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you've been addicted to something. But if you've been addicted to some substance, it's a little bit easier for you to understand. Because as you take that, right, be it alcohol or drugs or whatever, you take that and you feel like you're on top of the world, right? Right? And it makes you feel so great. And when you fall off of that, you just got to go right back to it. And you got to do more to get to the back to that euphoric feeling. And every time you fall off of that, you still got to do more every time you go back. And when someone is a recovering addict, right? We never say that they've actually recovered, right? My sister is a recovering alcoholic. She's not recovered. Because if she had a drink, she would tumble right back into that. Right? And that's the thing that we don't get if we haven't been there. You see, God gives us a new life. And when somebody is a recovering addict of any sort, they've been given a new life. When somebody has a near-death experience, they've been given a new life. They've been given a deeper understanding of what it means to live and to be here today. The addict knows... The recovering addict knows that there's always a chance, right? We can always fall back into that. That life is right there, right right there, all the time. And it's something that I can so easily just step right back into if I don't watch what I'm doing. If I don't completely put myself into the position that I need to be in. If I don't completely put myself into the life that God is giving me. I could easily fall back into that state of sin. I could easily fall back into that life that I don't want to be a part of. And that's what Paul is saying this morning. We've all died to that old self. So why would we even think about going there? Because what we have in front of us is so much richer and so much greater. God's grace is going to cover anything that we do. But does that mean that we should go out and sin just because we're going to get God's grace? It says in our reading this morning, by no means... Tell him, Wesley. (laughs) By no means should we continue to sin because we're going to get more grace. Because even if we don't sin, what is God going to give us? More grace. Yes. 
Because that's who God is. Because when we don't get His grace because it's covering something that we've done wrong, we're giving His grace to somebody else to help them understand exactly how much God loves them. So in doing that, God sees that our cup is going down. And what do the psalmists always tell us? That a cup is always going to be filled. Right? My, fill my cup and it's going to overflow. Right? Badoo, badoo. My daughter said, for those of you that don't know the camp song, there's a camp song. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Badoo, badoo. I should bring it up here and make you sing it. That's okay. God is always going to make sure that we have enough grace, enough love, so that we can share that with all of the world. And that's what he's calling each and every one of us to. This morning's lesson harkens us back to lessons that we had at Easter with the Great Commission, right? God sends us out into the world to baptize all people, teaching them everything that, that Jesus has taught us, and to remind them that God is always with them, right? This morning is a wonderful morning. I had no idea that this was the text this morning when we talked about having him baptized this morning. It just, this is how God works. But this morning, Wesley's going to come up here, and, it, and, in, and in these waters, God is going to name him and claim him as his own. He's going to take away all of the bad stuff that Wesley ever did or ever will do, and he's going to cover him with his grace, just like he did to each and every one of us. And he sets a new life in front of Wesley and says, here's the life that I want for you to have. And now we can choose this life, or we can choose the old life of sin. Which one are we going to choose? I can tell you which one you think might be more fun. But I can tell you which one is going to get you a greater reward. And is going to allow you to give love to more people all over the world. So this morning, as we watch Wesley get dunked, as Melanie said, into the waters of baptism. Remember that day that you were washed or dunked into the waters of baptism. And remember how God claimed you. Real quick, before we go, I just as we're talking about getting dunked into the waters of baptism. I've not been a Lutheran all my life. Shocker for some of you, I'm sure. Um, I was actually baptized Baptist when I was 19. I remember it quite, quite plainly because I was 19 years old, right? I remember going up that morning into the tank. They had a tank up above. It was a big church. And we walked up these steps, and the guy that baptized me put on a wetsuit, because he stood in the tank with me. And I walked in, and he told me to hold my nose like this, and he grabbed hold of my hand like this. And the last thing he said to me before he started to baptize me was, don't fight me. Don't fight me. Because what's your first reaction when you get pushed under the water? Especially for me, those of you that know me, right? How much do I love the water? <laughs> Not at all. So your first instinction when you get pushed underneath the water is to fight and to get back up. But that's the trust relationship I had to have with this man. And that's the trust relationship that we have to have with God. Because God pushes us under these waters. And he kills the old self. And he raises us up out of that water. And when we come out, we're a completely new person. And everything in our life has changed. So remember that. It may not seem like anything is different. But you are God's child. And because of that, you have the power to overcome anything that could separate you from him. So cling to that. And know that's not only a promise for you, it's a promise for everyone here. And we can all be reminded of that this morning when we see Wesley get that promise for himself. So remember that you are God's child, that you are dearly beloved, and that he gives you the strength to overcome anything that you could possibly come up against. And he tells you to go into the world to share the love he's given you so that everyone else can also become his child.